At the Buck Institute for Research on Aging, we're interested in understanding how to improve the aging process. And as part of that, we want to understand not just how we can make people live longer, but how they live better. And we define that span of life in which people are healthy as the health span. Now, one factor that we need to look into in understanding how this works are the different aspects of our life that might influence the health span. And so what I have been looking into is how does an input such as food influence the total system that is the human body? And so what I mean by this is I want to understand different components of our food. For example, we eat a lot of carbohydrates, we eat proteins. I want to understand if lowering or raising those levels of those particular aspects of food can influence health span. So thinking about the body and the system and the inputs that influence that system, it makes me think more about how I want to determine how I want to check the outputs of that system, for example, health span and lifespan. In order to do that, I needed to, to, to discover a particular model that I wanted to check that in. In my experiments, I frequently use fruit flies or Drosophila melanogaster. And one of the reasons why this makes a good model in order to test the uh, effects of food on health span is that they share a lot of the common genetic material with humans. In fact, about 60% of our genetic material is shared with flies, making them a valuable model to show how a certain effect caused by food might also influence a human. In looking at how food might influence the human body as the system, I recognize that there are a number of other various factors that could also influence how food is responded to by that individual. For example, there are a number of different genetic changes or differences between individuals. So what we see here is that there's examples of three different individuals who have different genetic codes and their response to the diet that I'm giving them might actually cause a different change in health span. For example, you might have a longer health span, an average health span, or even a shorter health span from someone else who is eating the exact same foods. Here's some data that I have shown from my work in which I looked at about 180 different strains of flies and all of these flies have different genetic backgrounds. I exposed them to two different diets, one that is a high protein diet and one that is a lower protein diet. And I measured how long these flies were active when that is how I determined that this is the health span of the fly. And what you can see here is that some strains that were on the high protein diet, for example, shown by the red bars, actually did very well on this high protein diet. Whereas on the very left side of the graph, there were a lot of strains that did not do well with the high protein diet. And the same is true of the reduced protein intake where there were some strains that performed really well and were healthy for most of their lives, there are other strains that performed much more poorly with the reduced protein intake. Once I've actually found the results in the flies about why they're responding to a diet in a different way and what genetic background influences can cause this effect, then what I would look into is understanding what it would do if I checked a system that is closer to a human, for example, a mouse model. Mice share about 90% of the genetic information that humans have, uh, which is more than a fly has. So if we could then find out what the genetic code change in a fly is that influences a response to a dietary change, I can then check that in a mouse as well. And if it happens in the mouse as well, then I could understand more fully how it might impact a human.